teachings and presentation. We are thankful for this moment and so be it. So Daniel will be speaking with us today about understanding our priorities. It's hard to get our priorities straight, right? Or even identifying them. What are our priorities, right? Do we have any, right? And if we have them, do we renew them? Do we just stick with them or throw them away or forget about them? Then it will be talking about with us about this beautiful topic. Is if we don't have priorities, where are we going? Right? But I'm not gonna ask many too many questions because I'm quite sure Daniel will be asking them, right, Daniel? It's hard to get them to get him behind the, the camera there, but he's coming. We're gonna lose this one. You can hold that. Thank you, Leo. Everyone, can you guys hear me? I hope the the sound is too loud. It's too loud over there. Just uh, can you load down a little bit? Um, echo. Just load down a little bit. I think it's because it's, okay. It's the number one, the mic one. Okay, better now. Okay. Let me know if. Uh, it's good now, people in the back. Welcome everyone. So as Leo just have um, mentioned about the title of this presentation and it is here in the screen. <clears throat> so talk about priority. Um, it is something that is very personal, right? And also, it's something that is very dynamic because change with depends of the the stage of the life we are talking about, right? So, for example, if we ask a child what their priority is, it's going to be different for another an adult, right? A teenager, for example. So, the priorities that we have in life is pretty much proportional to the stage of life we are living, right? So I believe that here, just in this small room, if we go and do a quick survey, we're gonna find out that we have different priorities. Some priority may be entangled with other things in our life, right? So what we wanted to do today is focus from the perspective of our priority B not when we are in the physical life, but as an immortal spirit. So the question is, when we make our priorities in life, do we think about short, long, or long, or middle, long-term goals, or we just, in a way that, okay, if I'm not here in the physical body, whatever decision I make today, will impact the next generation. So there is different types of priority, right? There is priority that is very short-term priority, other that is middle. But the question here is, we always, according to spiritism, I want to make priority that will help us to evolve spiritually speaking, right? Priority that will not speed up our evolution as a spirit, but also help others that live in our society also to grow, right? So should be always this priority that will help me, but also whatever that priority comes from my choices will impact others as well. So by making this introduction, the first question we ask is, if we need to talk about priority or choice, we need to know who we are. And the question is, why? Are we here? That's the first question. We cannot even continue the conversation if we don't answer this question. This is a personal question that requires a personal response, but we're gonna um, take what we learned from the Spirit's teaching and incorporate this in our lives. So, of course, we are in a Spirit Center. This question has been asked so many times and Pretty much we know the answer, right? But the question is for those that are watching us and those that is not 
even think about, you know, life after life, or those that doesn't believe that we have, we are spirits, for example, that we, we are just here because, because, right? So <clears throat> to answer this question, we will um, go to the Spirit's book, question 166. So Kardec asked about, and this is one question that has three sub-questions, okay? So Kardec asked, how can a soul who did not reach perfection during it, its incorporeal life completes the work of its purification? So here is pretty much in the topic of like reincarnation or evolution, right? So Kardec wanted really to know if we are spirit, right? So if you are a spirit, we have this journey toward perfection. So he wanted to know how to reach perfection, how to become a blessed spirit, a pure spirit. Um, so the answer is like by submitting to the trial of a new existence. So the first answer for the question why we are here is because we are here to learn, right? We are here to redress the previous mistake and to learn and to serve others. And, to, and to also to help in the creation because God created us, created the universe. But in order for us to evolve, we need to also to help those that are more advanced, help those that are a little bit behind. That's the way our it's called school system happen. That's the way family uh, setting uh, works, right? The older teaching the youngest, right? But here there is one thing that uh, in spiritism is a one of the principal, I would say, is one of the pillar for us to discuss about the just of God, is to take in consideration that we have multiple lives, that um, the doctrine of reincarnation is the only way that can explain why we are different people why we have different levels of virtues, vices, right? So it is important that we first answer this question and then understand by knowing this, what type of priority we're gonna choose in life. This is make a huge difference by knowing this before we make priorities. And this, when we talk about priority, is in different levels, right? We are not pick specifically what type of priority. I mean, I know that there is some priority that is an obligation, for example. If you're a parent, your priority is to take care of your children, right? If you're an employee, no matter what you want, you need to um, give account of your work, right? So those, there are some priorities that it is obligation that's related to our survive mode, right? In order to survive, we need to do certain priority. But we have our free will. We may decide not to do it, right? Or we may change completely, right? And even in spiritism, when we study about reincarnation, we may have a incarnatory plane that when we come here, we have the free will to change. Sometimes we change. Well, what is the implication of this? The implication is that when we talk about priority, we need to add another component that we call time, right? For God, for the great time doesn't exist. For high periods, uh, blessed spirits, a time is irrelevant. For us, it's very important, right? For us, it's very important. So we, we need to take in consideration time. We are in a physical body. We have an average of, I don't know, 62, 65 years in the physical body, right? That's the life expectancy. I'm talking about the average, right? So 65, that's what the science says. A hundred years ago, we used to live only 30, 40 years old because of disease, of wars. But with the advance of technology and medicine, this life expectancy increased to 65, 70. You know, nowadays we have people that live a hundred years, but the average, we're talking about the average in our planet, right? So, all this 
is not much, right? So and then the time is the time is sometimes can betray us because we make priority or choose things that when we look at back, it's, oh my goodness, why I should not have invested in that time, but the time has already passed. So the good thing is that in the grandeur of the creation, that's not a problem. God is not going to be sad. But the immortal spirit may feel like, you know, I, I missed half of my reincarnation because my choice, my priority was something that didn't help much. So what we do, no problem. Because we're going to have another chance. We learned that that way didn't work. It's like when we drive in a highway and miss the exit, so the GPS say recalculating. So we end, we come back and do it again. Kardec continued because Kardec was not satisfied with the answer. Okay, very well. And then he continued asking, how does the soul accomplish this new existence through its transformation as, as a spirit? So he asked the question, he already gave the hint to the enlightened spirit to answer. The enlightened spirit answered and said, in order to purify itself, purified here in the sense that, you know, evolve moral and spiritual, spiritually speaking. The soul, of course, undergoes a transformation, but for this to occur, it needs the trials of corporeal life. Well, <clears throat> we come here, we live in the, in the physical body, and I'm going to spend the, my whole life think about spirituality. Why? I should have stayed there. Because as a spirit, I don't have the physical body. So I just need to be there, pray, be in the spiritual calling. Why we reincarnate? Because if I reincarnate just to work my spirituality, would be better if I have not reincarnated, stay as a spirit, right? Why in the physical body? Why I need to think all the time I'm a spirit, I need to go to the spiritual world? Why? We should have been not come, stay there, right? It's like, for example, bring to more concrete explanation. I was born in Brazil. Majority of us here was born in Brazil. We come to the U.S. If we come to the U.S. and stay all the time, oh, Brazil, I miss Brazil. Why Brazil is the best place? Why you came to the U.S. if Brazil is the best place, <laughs> right? So it's this kind of question that we need to ask. How can I make the balance between this um, type of, um, how do you say, um, how I balance those type of, um, um, not anguish, um, crisis that sometimes we have, like existential existen crisis that we have uh, when we don't know what to do, we don't know what to prioritize in life, right? So the answer here is like the corporeal life is very important for the spirit to progress. We can progress on the other side, but very little. Because when we are on the other side, we are bound by the affinity with others' spirit, right? But here we can live in a, in a, in a society that we have different levels of, of, um, of people, different levels. So in order for us to exercise our virtues, we need to be in an environment that is very adverse. So we don't progress if we are just hang together with people that think alike. There is no, no evolution there. If everybody thinks at the same level, there is no challenge because we all agree with one another. So there is no way to have conflict. We need to have some conflict. And that's when the spirits progress, when there is a conflict and you know how to take um, advantage of the conflict without create a problem, right? So let's see what Kardec, or Kardec asks, continue ask. Then, does the soul live many corporeal existence? Yes, we all live many lives 
And those who say otherwise wish to keep you in the ignorance in which they themselves dealt. That's the way you read that? Dwell, dwell. That, that is their desire. So we're not going to argue on that. If someone says, I don't believe in reincarnation, I don't believe there is a God, there is no argument. There is no time to waste because we need to respect people, the different, the level that they are. We are not here to, to, to play God. We already have one God to do that, right? And, and its law, his laws. Finally, Kardec was not satisfied and asked, from this principle, it seems that after having left one body behind, the soul then takes another. In, in other words, it's reincarnated into a new body. Is this the case? So Kardec is asking the same question in a different way. And the answer is simple, one word, obviously. Are you happy now, Kardec? <laughs> right? So this is one question with multiple sub-questions. And we see that in the spirit book, if you study the spirit book, and we're going to study this book again. We have been studied like a couple of times here in the SSB. If you systematically study the spirit book, what call our attention the most it's not the answers, it's the questions. Because good answers only happen if we know how to make the questions. That's the philosophical paradigms, right? If you see the way Kardec asks those questions, and he, he do in a way that he is not satisfied, he asks the question, the spirit answer. And I was thinking about if I was to answer those questions, by the third time he asked the question, because he asked the question in a way that is very superficial, and then he's going to go deep. And it's like a child don't ask question to you. He asks the same question over and over in a different way. But the third, after the third time, you become a little bit upset, right? I have already told you, right? Don't you get it, right? So why we start with this? Because going back to the topic of today, priorities, and I'm not here in a position to give to you or to those that's watching us how to make a priority, but I, I'm here in a way to compi compile this information that Spirit brings to us, and you're going to help yourself to make your priority, right? There is no like um, silver bullet. I don't like this example, but there is no like a, um, a, a magic want that you're going to use and suddenly your priorities become the best and your life is going to be beautiful. So you need to do that, right? <clears throat> so I already mentioned about priority in the sense that we is very personal, that we need to um, always think that whatever we choose, there is a consequence. Um, Depends of our the stage of our life, our priority might be more personal. And always we always need to think how my improvement as a person, as the immortal spirit, will not help ourselves, but help those that surround me. So the question is if we can make an exercise to think about ourselves as an immortal spirit. Maybe our priority to our decision or our choices, we, we're going to think before, right? Because much of the time, we um, short, long-term goal is made out of thinking what the consequence could be. One thing is that even if we choose, if we prioritize something, we are, there is a chance that that thing is not going to happen because there is other factors that can be involved, right? So, for example, in a family, you may make a priority, okay, I'm gonna change my job, but also you need to see your family setting, how that change will impact in the life of your spouse, of your children, um, even in your professional career. So if I decide to take this type of professional, what this is gonna implicate is just for me to make money. I'm not saying that if you wanted to make money, just a profit, that's, that's good. But you need to think, 
if I choose that career, I'm I so you need to ask the question, I'll be a good professional in this area, right? Because sometimes people forget that they wanted to do some career because of the money. But even if you can be trained, you become a lousy professional. And we have this in our area, right? So we don't want to judge, but this is the reality. This is the reality in life, right? So <clears throat> since we asked the question, if one of the, our priorities are important or spiritual is become more spiritualized, right, is, is, is really see ourselves as immortal spirit, we are in a physical body and we should not um, disregard the life in the physical body because that is a very precious phase in the evolution of the spirit. This is the place that we are right now that we evolve the most or we stagnate, right? So in spiritism, we don't believe that we we grasped, we, we go back. Either we stop that level or you go a little bit further, right? So there is other question in the spiritual book about material joy, right? So of course we are here. We need to take advantage of the life that we have. Even Jesus told us we need to live in the world, but always with our focus in our spiritual life because that is our true nature. The physical body, we perish. We're not gonna bring to the other side, right? So that's why everything that perishes in life, we should not put 100% of our batch there because it's not gonna give um, good return, right? If we think about, you know, get something back. So Kardec asked this question, question 712. Toward what end has God made the enjoyment of material things attractive? Wow, I'm gonna buy that Ferrari, right, Leo? Or oh, that house, beautiful house. Why those kind of things attract us so much? Why? And there is nothing wrong with this. You know, one of the things that I when I look at that the new computer, Mac computer will come, the new, so how how fast it is. So that that's enticed you all like, oh I want to buy this. Maybe this is gonna help me more, right? Why we have this? Look at the answer. To drive humans to the fulfillment of their mission and also to test them with temptation. So there is a purpose. Now, the purpose, that's why it's very important. What is our purpose in life, right? Because based on our purpose, we're gonna make a priority, right? If my purpose in life is has material thing, then my priority is gonna be toward things that will help me to get material things, right? So look what Kardec does. I mean, he did, right? What is the purpose of such temptation? Temptation is good, it's not bad. But how we take advantage of those temptation is gonna make a huge difference, right? To develop their reason so that they may keep themselves from excesses. So if you desire to have a nice house, nice car, beautiful purse, for example, for the women's, right? There is nothing wrong. The question is, is this gonna be an excess in your life? Only you can answer this question. Because based on your lifestyle, maybe to have that type of material things, is okay, right? But if your lifestyle doesn't require that, why are you gonna have that? Temptation is very good because it's gonna help us to develop our reason. So do I need to have this? If the answer is yes, because, and then you answer dot, 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 that's fine. If the dot, dot, dot answer is gonna be something just to increase your vanity, show ups, shows ups, right? So then is something that we need to rethink about priority, right? 
So Buddha says this that I find fascinating. We are shaped by our thoughts. We become what we think. When the mind is pure, joy follows like a shadow that never leaves. When I was a kid, when I was learning about my physical body, one of the things that um, in Brazil that strike me a lot was that when I was like, you know, very hot, sunny day, I used to see my shadow and I was trying to over, over, go over my, my shadow, right? You know, you see your shadow never leaves you, right? Try to do something the shadow is gonna imitate. So, because I didn't understand how, you know, that the shadow was a project of, you know, the sun, the light create a shadow. So that's what Buddha is saying here. Our thought, if our thought, if we think, when well, our, our mind is pure, joy follows like a shadow that never leaves. Because if the light projects in you, the outcome of blocks of the light, the shadow is gonna is a reflect of your body, right? Talking about light and blocked. So we have the eclipse last week, right? A lot of people took picture over there. I did. <clears throat> so now I want to bring a case. I I brought this case here before. Um, why I'm gonna bring this case is that, as I mentioned in the beginning, our life short in the physical body, but we have many opportunities that we call reincarnation, right? Kirsten gave a nice talk last week about reincarnation. So an example how we may betray ourselves by misusing the time we have in the physical body. This is an example. There are several examples in the spiritual literature, but this is in this book, Reportaging the Alain Tumulo, Reports from Beyond the Grave. This book is not in English yet was psychographed by uh, Chico Xavier, and the, the spirit was Humberto de Campo, chapter 8. So in Portuguese, the, the title is O Livre Pensador. So we translate the free thinker, right? So this is a case of a someone that was a materialist and later in life became a spiritist. His name was Raimundo, Raimundo da Anunciação, very Brazilian name, right? <clears throat> so this man, so once he became a spiritist, and why I'm bringing uh, this example, because it's in the book, it's a case that is very fascinating, and I think it's very appropriate for this talk. He became, um, he was so happy with this new teaching, but then he wanted to impose this, to other people, they work. You want people to become spiritists too, right? And he starts to um, pretty much um, putting down other religions. So he starts to do everything that spiritist does not teach you to do, basically. So in fact, he was rebellious. He never listened to anyone. He was moving from one spirit center to other spirit center. People in the spirit center was telling him, look, a little bit just toned down, right? But he was not listening. He was very controversial, lack of understanding. Um, he was constant in arguments, constant. So if you say something, he will always be, you know, always has something to say. He cultivate many enemies. So that's what happened when, when you are not, when we cannot compromise with other people the way that other people think, we may create that, right? People that create aversion to us did not listen, he taught to impose personal conviction, blah, 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 lot of things, like two pages of about the way he has behaved. At the end of his mother life, his mother called him and said, my son, before I go to the other side, I want to ask you to, you know, be more patient with what you, try to tell people what people need to do it. So even though the mother was asking, he was a little bit touched by the word of the mother, but he said, look, I have the freedom of speech, so I can say whatever I want, I'm free. And that is the, that is the problem of freedom of speech. 
because sometimes we take that and we think that we can do whatever we want and we don't think about consequence, that this can generate um, problems to other people, right? And we don't know, we use that, but we forget that there is consequences because sometimes what we say will create a, a version for other people, right? Because not everybody is in the same level, not everybody is prepared to listen and to say, oh, okay, that's fine. People take personal. And that is the problem. And the question is, are we use our time in the physical body to promote harmony or to create disharmony? We need to ask this question. This is a personal question for everyone, including me. So then he died. Then he died. What happened to Mr. Raimundo da Anunciação? He find himself in the other side, very perturbed. And the first question of why he was in that dark place in the other side, right? And after many time in the going to this spiritual perturbation, he was rescued to an outpost, a place that only rescued people that did not make an effort to um, evolve when they are in the physical body. Pretty much only rest people that waste their time in the physical body. Those people that always complain about everything, nothing is, 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 is right, or those that only create problems in order to focus their personal life or to help the society. So there is place in the spiritual plane that rest those type of people. So he was brought to that place. So then, after he came to his sense, he asked a meeting with the director of that place. Let's put this, the, of that spirit center, of that center that rescued him. So I wanted to ask, you know, why I'm here and I wanted to go back. So he already was aware about his situation. So when he went there, the mentor, the spiritual guide, went to a bookshelf, and from this bookshelf, it's beautiful in Portuguese. He grabbed like a piece of paper that was like lighting piece of paper where there is some, some notes of his life when he was in the physical body. Dun, 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 dun. So then he starts to read the note to him. Let's see. Oh, why? Because he starts to say, oh, I was a good man. I was, you know, doing the best that I can. I was try to help people. I was, I have the, this um, freedom to tell people what. So he was trying to justify the time that he was in the physical body. And, and the mentor didn't argue and said, let me look at your files. Let's look at together. And then he was silent. So, and, and the file says, you lived 53 years in the physical body, 53 in five days. So it's my age, right? I was like, oh my goodness. So, and the way the mentor says is the number of hours. So we hear when we're gonna, we find a job, they pay by hours, right? So there they count, okay, let's see how many hours in your, this 53, 53 years that you spend the fiscal budget. 460,000 hours, that was his life. A third, he's spending rest, sleep, and distraction. So I made the, the math here. So we are talking about 18 years. So out of like 53 years, 18 years, he was just like spending rest, sleep, and distraction. <coughs> Didn't go to the detail. So this is 30% of his life. Then 6.6 .6 years was doing office work. We don't believe here that he works um, six years only. So maybe he was in, he was in a work for 20 years, but work by itself was just six years. If you compress everything, right? So the, all the other time, probably he was like drink a cough, talking to someone. He was not doing the actual work, right? 5.8 years, he was feeding the body. So breakfast, lunch, so 
you know, half an hour that we take for lunch in, the, in our work schedule. So this was counted. So this was in his file, right? So we talk about 11% of, of his life. Finally, 200,000 hours with unproductive discussion, mental or verbal, direct and indirect. So when I convert this in years, this is 22.8 years out of 53 years that he lives. This corresponds to 43% of his life. Almost 50% of his life, he was just like trying to, you know, convince people that, you know, his belief was better than the other or create problem or talk about social problems. And he was forgetting that he was creating uh, something that will play against him after he discarnated, right? So why I'm, I'm talking, bring about this? The reason that this case is very important for us is that we, when we think about priority, when we think about choices that we make, when we think about what I'm gonna engage, we need to think that this is gonna be put as a note in our files. And there is a consequence of whatever I do. I don't want to scare anyone because when I was reading this, I was scaring myself. Oh my goodness, right? But everything has a consequences, right? So the idea to talk about understanding our priorities is not to scare us. It's just to create our awareness of how we manage the time that God gave to us in this physical body to manage this reincarnation. That's it. Now, Daniel, I'm at the end of my life now. Or if we live here today and something happened and I find myself in the spiritual plane, oh my goodness, I didn't do, I didn't complete my purpose. There is no problem. Our Father, God, is a loving, justice Father, right? There is no problem. We are always going to have new opportunities. The only question that we need to ask is that, is the next opportunity the same that we had? Um, maybe in this lifetime, we are born in a family that was very, you know, helpful. We have father and mother, we have siblings, we have food on the table. It's not a guarantee that the next reincarnation, we're gonna be in a family like this in a place that we have freedom of speech, we have freedom of religion, is not guaranteed that next reincarnation we're gonna be born in the same society that we have nowadays. It's a blessing to be here nowadays, right? This yeah, especially, especially in the United States, exactly. Without going to any other, um, but we know that our planet, there is many places that when you look at that, that's why it's very important to think about priorities and take advantage of our time. Now, we are moving toward the end of our, so I'm gonna open for question, comment, and I would like you guys to participate. But Daniel, how can spirituals help with my priority? How? How this teaching can help us to make good priority? Oh, priority, I'm not going to say good because we wanted to respect other, you know, philosophers that also help people to make priority. But I would say priority that will create, will have a positive result in the life of the immortal spirit. For, be, because whatever we do, we think now, as a spiritist, we always need to think, okay, if I do this today, how this is going to impact my next reincarnation? Let's not think about 10 reincarnation for now, right? So that's the, that's the invitation that this teaching brings to us. It's like decisions, choice, is not only impact in this life, can also be brought to the other. If the, if the choice, the priorities have a positive outcome, then we can see the, that the fruit of this choice will will be good, right? So here is something that we learn spiritually, many other things, but I highlight this couple of them that 
if we pay attention to this item, this can help us every time we are in a situation that in a conflict to make decisions, right? First, self-reflection. First, we need to turn to yourself and identify what is your values. What values you bring in this life? You as immortal spirit. I'm going to give an example, right? I can identify some values that I learned from, you know, my culture, my family, from spirits that teach me. And I incorporate that as my value. Okay, I, that's the way I'm going to act based on what I have incorporated, right? So you need to do that. And you're going to answer this to yourself. If someone comes to you and offer to you something that is not legal, how are you going to behave? You're gonna say, okay, so I cannot take part on this. This will bring me in trouble with the law. So let me say no here. So your value is going to make uh, you to make decisions that you're going to say no. You're going to say yes. From here, there, I cannot go because that's not what my value is, right? Values, very important. But this only comes when you do this self-reflection, right? Second, every time we made a priority, we need to ask the question, is this priority aligned with the divine laws? Daniel, can you elaborate more on this? Is this decision that I'll make or I'm going to prioritize my life is inside of the divine laws. Then Daniel, can you explain what divine laws means? Okay, the third part of the first book, Kardec broke down the divine laws or natural law in 10 moral ones, right? We talk about the moral laws, not the physical laws. Law of worship, progress, uh, production. Um, help me there, Leo. <laughs> I don't know all the things together. Production, destruction society. Yeah, there is 10 laws over there. So is that, because sometimes say no or, you know, put a break on some um, toxic relationship, is fulfilled uh, divine law, natural law, because we make the assessment that we cannot go from this, this point over to help that person. So we let, we let the person <laughs> deal with themselves, right? Um, so we need to make this question. Is this aligned with the divine laws? Why is important? Because there is one law that's part of the divine law that applies to physical and to the moral. There is just one law inside of the divine laws that is applied for physical and for, for moral. Which law is that? The law of action and reaction. Cause and effect. If I knock this, you know, if I punch this wall, the wall will respond in the same amount, right? If I cause some disturbance in a relationship, that is an effect. So we always need to think whatever decision priority I'll make in life, what is going to be the effect of that, right? So this is very important. Balance material and spiritual priority. We are in the physical body. We need to balance that. You can't be here, just think about the spiritual plan. If you if you are a spiritist and say, oh, you know, I just wanted to pray every day. No, Kardec in the book, what is spiritism? Kardec says something very interesting. And my daughter reminded me today because she was reading the book. She said, wow, I like what Kardec said in what is spiritism. So what is that? <laughs> Tell me. And if she's listening to me, so I'll give credit to her to remind me that. And she said, well, Kardec mentioned over there that it's not important to pray every day. It's the quality of prayer. It's not the amount of prayers. So, hmm, very interesting. You know, with all the respect, with anyone that wanted to pray every day, three times in a day, five times, many times, that's fine. There is nothing wrong. The question is, is this prayer effective? Is the quality of this prayer um, useful? We, we are not in, position, in the position to answer this question unless only God that received the prayers that's going to deem if the prayer is, is good or not, right? So balance material and spiritual priority. We are in the physical body. We need to take care of our body. 
need to take care of our survive mode. Never forget that temptation is good to help us to reason about the excesses. Just one spouse. You can have many children with one spouse, right? <laughs> so not have many women or many men, right? So it's, it's an excess. Everything that's more than one is excess, right? Serve to others. So we're talking about charity, right? Help others. Letting go of unnecessary distraction. What is unnecessary distraction? Well, it depends on the, the phase of your life, you know? Oh, every time you engage in something that you, you're going to judge that. Is this really help, helpful for me? Because sometimes we need to have some type of distraction just to buffering our life. But is this distraction too much? Right? So we need to, need to think about that. Prioritize personal growth, spiritual development. Always think about, you know, that we are immortal spirit. So um, in the gospel, according to Spiritus, uh, chapter 17, talk about be perfect, right? And if you read that chapter, after you read the chapter, you felt a little bit depressed, right? Because the invitation or the number of steps we need to do it to become a perfect spirit is the bar is very high. But this is our ultimate, ultimate goal. One day we're going to be there. So, um, so in the item two of this chapter, Kardec is saying, in that way, he, Jesus, shows that the essence of perfection is charity in its broadest definition because it's entailed the press of all other virtues. By making priority to help others, will bring to us, we bring to us the practice by repetition to build virtues. Patience, because when we help other people, when we truly help, we, we, we have to learn how to be patient, how to be kind, right? If we wanna do charity according to what Jesus, definition by Jesus, right? That we learn in the Spirit's book. Patience, benevolence, and indulgence, right? Beep, né? Benevolence, indulgence, and patience. Beep. Benevolence, forgiveness. Beep. Benevolence, indulgence, and forgiveness of others. Okay, perfect. Yes. So, because when we do this, then we are building up, you know, virtue on us. And there is this American item, um, writer, and I believe Paula and, and Rob know very well because it's part of the literature. He, was, he won the Nobel Prize in the 60s. Uh, I cannot read that. John Stein, yes. Well, he said something very interesting. And now that you don't have to be perfect, you can be good. And the credit here go to my wife because she told me about him and says, oh, you know, there is this quote from you know, um, this right American white writer, and I think he's very good, very good for what you're gonna talk today. So yeah, until we, we reach that level, let's do good today. We don't need to think about perfection right now. The perfection is our purpose, right? Is our goal. To reach that, we'll be related to what type of priority we make now. And if right now, one of the priorities that will certainly help us is do good, right? Daniel, what is good? Everything that goes according to God's law. What is evil? Everything that deviates from God's law. So then we can do our exercise and make that decision, right? To finalize, I find this article by this spiritist, Brazilian spiritist person in Brazil called Antonio Navarro. And he wrote this article in a Spirit Center webpage uh, from Sao Paulo, uh, Council Center of Sao Paulo, where he, the entitled like, um, Choices and Priority. 
And I wanted to finalize with this article because what he says, I think is very appropriate for our, our talk of today. And forgive me, the English is not too, yeah, because we translate from Portuguese, but let us, let us, let us see. If it is complicated, I can explain, I can elaborate what he's trying to say. He starts by saying like this, there will always be many options to choose from in life, but there, there will also always be priorities. There is an excess of information reaching us through all types of media. Which one interests you? As he asked the question. And then he answered, okay? So this is not a space. He answered. He said like this. The priority should be what is constructive and provide us with better condition for growth in all areas. That caught my attention. So we have a bunch of medias out there, right? Like social media in general, right? Podcasts. Um, we need to choose those that help us to grow in all areas. How can we grow in your areas when we give an opportunity to see all the sides of one situation, right? If I put your house here, if you go up, how do we def define the house? Just by the roof? I mean, looking from the out, from out up there, right? No. So how I really have the answer of the house, if I look all the side of the house, right? Then I can say, this is a house because it has a roof, has a windows, has a door, right? Is that the story about the elephant, right? So if you put something in your face and, and so try to tell what animal is that. So if someone holding the tail is gonna say something and someone holding the, what do you call that? The, the trunk of the elephant is gonna say another thing, right? So, but when we take that from our, our vision and look at from, and see the big picture of the situation, we can have the perspective for every angle of the situation. That's why it's very, it's very, and Kardec mentioned this in the Spirit's book, it's very important when we make evaluation of something, of someone. For example, if we see a person that did this type of crime, the first thing we have is to judge by the crime, the crime. We judge the crime, but the person has many information from previous life that we don't have access. Why the person did that? What level that spirit is still is? We are not like judging, we're just evaluating the situation. So what is all the elements that that spirit bring to make that action? You know something that is very important that we do, we human beings. We always say something that, and, and this applies to me because I caught myself doing this sometimes. You know, I have this limitation because I was born like in that place that I didn't have good opportunity, right? Because the place didn't offer good opportunity. So it's easy for us to justify why our priority, our purpose didn't materialize because of this or that. But when we analyze someone, we forget to add those elements because we are still in the level that we are judged that immediate action that is in front of our face. That is not wrong with that. That's part of human being. We are like this. And that's why we are here to look at different. Is this easy? It's not. It's not easy. It's not easy. I mean, if it was easy, we are like a perfect spirit by now, right? And, and so that is important here when he says, we need to choose what is constructive and provide us with better condition for growth in all area. We are all learning on how to do that. There is an excess of permit, uh, pessimism surround us. That's true, right? So there is a lot of pessimism that, you know, sometimes it becomes overwhelming, right? So what he said about this, the priority should be to adapt after crucial, Critical, critical analysis 
to the optimism necessary for a better future. So recognize that there is a lot of pessimism, that's fine, but so we need to analyze very well if we wanted to be in that line of pessimistic idea, or if we wanted to take that as an opportunity to overcome pessimism. So it's up to each one of us, because if we become too pessimist, the future is not good, right? So we need to kind of do this critical analysis. There is a wave of violence still present and widespread among all of us. The priority should be to focus on the violence within us, seeking to transform us in the Lordship. We all have inside of us this violent, you know, that sometimes we hold because it's the predominance of the animal instinct that is still inside of us. And we need to hold that, right? The animal kingdom, they need to fight with each other to make sure that the, the species is gonna move on to protect their prole, to, um, and it's part of that nature, right? But as a human being, as a spirit, individualized as a spirit, this become a little bit more complex because we are not animals anymore. I mean, we are spirit, in the in a human body. Uh, there is a material consumerism surround and bombarding us, right? The priority should be a careful analysis and ask this question. Is that material good really necessary? So let's go to the question of temptation, right? We need to ask this question, right? There is a widespread insistence on enjoying the pleasure that modern life offers. The priority should be the balance resulting from physical and moral well-being in the light of natural laws. Natural law here, divine laws, right? There are many goods, oh, there are many goals we set for ourselves to achieve in this life. The priority should be the essential goal of the immortal spirit. So that is what we have mentioned. Like whatever goals we put in mind, let us think about, is this help me also in the next reincarnations as well? There are many intelligences, incarnate and discarnate, that influence our way of thinking. Spiritual influence, right? The priority should be personal autonomy result from knowledge of natural law having our Lord Jesus Christ as a guide and model. There will always be behavioral option that changes our morality and intelligence. The priority should be the development of our spirit in the application of love one another and instruct yourself because in essence, we are a spiritual being undergoing necessary material experiences, right? Focus on ourselves first, right? For where we come and to where we are going, everything that is useless to the spirit will perish, which must be thrown off our shoulders and replaced by a living virtues of eternal achievements that are essential for our happiness. It will always be a matter of choice. At the end, it's going to be a matter of choice, but it will also always be a matter of to each according to his or her works, so that we can reinforce achievements through natural positive feedback or reflect through the pain that spiritual illusions provide. So when we talk about pain here, we need to contextualize pain, physical and moral, right? There is people that physically is perfect, but may go undergoing to a very um, tremendous moral pains, right? Shames, you know, did something that really is regretful. So we need to be careful because our priority and our choice may create that, right? Let us meditate more on this. 
So there is more other stuff that I didn't put it here, but I think this summarizes this topic of priority. We we are all we we are always free to sow. Once you sow, we need to reap the consequence of our sow, right? So it's important that we sow good fruits. So the cons the, the harvest is gonna be sweet, sweet fruits, right? Not bitter, right? So with that, guys, thank you so much. Now I'm gonna open for question and and comment. Look. This does not encompass everything about priority. Priority is very dynamic, can change. But I think the invitation and the spirituals invite us to this. Spirituals does not, pro does not prohibit anything, but expect everything from us. Once we have this teaching, there is an expectation from who? From our unconscious, our unconscious mind, right? Our conscience was expect us. That's what happened to Mr. Raimundo da Anunciação. What a name, right? Anunciação. Question, uh, Leo, you have the mic over there? <clears throat> yeah, we have like okay. five minutes, ten minutes to go. Anyone with a, may have a question? Is there any question in the... In the, the yes, show? I would like to first show... Sarah saying it's true. It's true what? <laughs> when you mentioned that about yeah, she <laughs> mentioned this before I left home. She was like, "Oh, I was reading this book where is spiritism and there is this this comment from Kardec." Yeah. Oh, you want me to put it here in there? Okay, I can put it here. So, just a minute, Leo. I can. No, I already already put oh, it there. Put it there? Just, already okay. did, yeah. But it's just for you to put on the screen so people can okay. see as well. And then we have a question by Sarah as well saying, great talk. My question is, is there an objective basis for priorities or are they entirely subjective? Uh, the object base is the consequence. That's the object base. Whatever consequence that brings is, is what it is, right? But once you make the priorities up there in the air, so, I mean, like, we need to be more specific uh, in terms of priority because, as I mentioned, that is personal priority that's related to our professional professional life, right? If you wanted to, I don't know, be a lawyer, so you need to go to law school, right? You need to go and do those requirements. Um, so I think to, to answer your question, Sarah, we go back to that question. That's why I start with those questions about why we are here. So the first thing, why am I here? So why we are here? Just to like eat, sleep, have sex, pay the bills, go to work. I mean, that's what we are here. If this is the answer, mm, let's elaborate more on that. That's not the, the immortal, the, the answer that will really help us to. Because once we, once we don't have this body, those priorities is not needed anymore, right? So that's why I think the we need to think about that's fine. Okay, the priority to have a degree. So we need to create an expectation. I'm gonna have this degree because probably I'm gonna have a better job and I can provide more for my family. That's the priority. Good. There is nothing wrong with that, right? So that's why when we make priority, there is always that question: is this a short-term priority? If it is a source pen, fine. Finish the priority. What's going to be next? So one thing that we learn as a human being is like we are never satisfied. I'll give an example. So when we are a teenager, we see ourselves to become an adult. Once we become an adult, we want to have a good job. Once we have a good job, we want to have a wife or a husband. Once we have a husband, have children, have a house. Once I have a house, I want to have a car. Once I have a car, I want to have a boat, an airplane. So we are always look for something, right? I mean, like, we are always look to, you know, and people, when they have all the material achievement, they wanted to go to the deep of the ocean just to do a tourism or go to the moon or go, because they have so much material thing that they wanted to explore more and more. 
What's the problem of this? What's the problem of this? Kardec, the spiritual order answer, temptation. Until when this is going to end, this, you know, you can redirect this to help others. And here is something that I, I wanted to make very clear. I'm not criticizing people that do that. Because if you do this, but at the same time, you provide a lot of jobs to people. Because if you want to go to the moon, how many people need to work to put something to bring you to the moon, right? So we need always to think about like, Oh, if you are criticizing the person to do that, but look how many jobs has been generated, you know, for that person. How many families has been fed for, for the advancement of science, right? So the, we always need to think about, look at this, the, the, the look at, like, critical look at all the angles of the situation. It's very easy for us to judge for good and for bad. We see someone that go to jail, get a lifetime in prison, and we like crapping, right? Oh, yeah, that's good. You need to be careful with that. We need to be careful with our judgment. We don't know the life of that spirit. It is good that that spirit is going to be um, out of the society, yes. But what is the beep? What is the beep on that thing, right? Benevolence, indulgence, and forgiveness. So, so be follow Jesus Christ is not easy. Be a spiritual is not something easy to do it because it can betray us very easily, like when we become too much, not, not find this balance. So I'm saying this because um, we are even talk, Leo and I and Hosanna this week about this top priority. One of the things that she shared with us it was very interesting. Her mother was at the hospital for 20 days. And the mother was a little bit sad. So, oh my goodness, I'm in the hospital. And, and she said to the mother, something that stuck with me in our conversation, said, look, look at how many nurses, physicians, people work in the hospital just because you are here. So this is the time that you need to accept to be to someone to help you. Instead, become a little bit upset. And you are a nurse, right? So you have your job because there is sick people, right? So when we get sick, let's not become like, oh my goodness, God, this, you know, why this happened to me? It's an opportunity for you to also be, know how to, to receive help. What is that? The workers. Paula, Mike. Paula, here. Yes. Thank you. Um, this one, closer. Is, yeah. this one is just for organizational purposes. How do you distinguish priorities and goals? That's a good question. It's a curving ball question. Priorities and goal. I don't know. How did you define, Paula? I really don't know. <laughs> now it's circular. I guess to me, the priority would be the where you are in the stage of life. Like you said, school, mm -hmm. relationship, writing your will. Um, and the goals are the behavioral breakdowns as to yeah. how you achieve the priority. Yeah, all of the above. I agree with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think I think you said it all. Yeah, I, I, I don't know more. I, I cannot elaborate more better than you did. If someone can, please. Yeah, yeah, or your steps to get there. I think I. Yeah, so when we talk about goals and priority, always there is this short term, middle, long term goal. So it depends. I mean, like, so for example, I'll give an example. It's, it's, we need to put in the context of what we are asking. What is your goal, for example, when you reach 70, 70 years old? Maybe your goal is to retire. And then you're going to work to get a nice pension, nice retirement. Maybe this is your goal. What is your goal? Is traveling the plan? So, then you make a priority that will help to achieve your goal. So priority, I think you answer right. That's the way I understand you. And my um, other question was... Mike, Mike, Mike. Oops, I'm sorry. Your case study, that man was materialist, and then he discovers spiritism. I was reading recently that a spiritual knowledge or belief or something is just part of our structure. 
I mean, it, when we were born, it's in there somewhere. So how do people lose contact with this spiritual impulse? Oh, I think the question is when Kardec talk about the material joy. It, so it's when we get caught up with the material plane. So when we think that the end goal of our happiness is in matter, in thing that perishes. And we need to add this also to relationships. There is a lot of family that they are too much attached to each other, like mother, son, you know, and the relationship also can really impact because it's not a guarantee that those spirits will come together as a family in the next reincarnation, right? So that's why when we raise our children, we raise to be good citizens, good people, and you let them become independent. If we become too attached, that relationship becomes toxic, and that is a materialistic way, a materialistic relationship. So we need to add this, because we mentioned here about matter, like car, houses, material thing, but also you need to think about that. Leo, Rob. Hey, thanks. Um, so yeah, I agree with your statements about the law of consequences and action, reaction, results. Um, but it has me thinking about the Buddha quote that you put up in terms of how our thoughts are followed by a shadow of joy. And so it just gets me to thinking about, you know, I guess observing my own thoughts in the sense of, uh, you know, to me, it seems like a, a challenging task to have those pure thoughts. And then even when a negative thought does pass by, that it's best to let it pass by in silence and that there's just gonna, there, those things are gonna arise time to time, and that to not to do so would be like holding down a stoppage in a flooded sink or something. And so you have to have some kind of um, processing of even the bad thoughts and negative thoughts. But it seems like it, it's supposedly a higher goal to purify <laughs> one's thoughts and mm. cleanse one's thoughts. So my question is, how does one do that? How does one spiritually purify? the thoughts so that in the first place, the origins of those good feelings that follow according to the law of consequences take place. Very good point. The excellent point. Why? Because this is an excellent point. And, and thank you for bringing that because every actions, every priority we take, every first is creating the realm of our thoughts, right? So first is a thought that later is going to materialize. So my first suggestion is like, every thought that comes to our mind, there is two source. The first thought is ours. The other thoughts that come after, and this is in the Spirit's book, right, can be uh, suggestive thoughts. For example, I'll give an example. Okay, I'm sitting here in my house, and I'm think how, um, I would say how to rob a bank. <laughs> what a thought that comes to my mind. But let's think about that because we'll talk about uh, bad thoughts, right? I think here, how to rob a bank. I wanted to become a millionaire. I wanted to have a lot of money. How to rob a bank. The first thought is yours. And then you start to think about that. And then you attract spirits that is the same frequency. We potentiate that thought. And then we will give, start to give suggestion to you how to put a plan to rob a bank. So, so let us not blame others for our action because the first one is ours. And then the other is potentiating by other minds that is in the same level. The same thing applies for positive thoughts. I'm thinking here to create a project that will help people I don't know how to do it. I don't have the money. My salary better, you know, is, is, is enough to pay the bills or to put food on my table. So once you start to think that every day, then someone approach you and you, you're gonna get people that's gonna connect to you and suddenly you have like a donor, someone that, that you help you. And that's why you see people that has nothing create big projects because their thoughts became in a level that they attract other positive thoughts that immediately is going to 
inspire other people to help in that project, right? So that's one, the two things that we need to put in mind. So let us take responsibility for whatever we think first. What I would say is that don't feel bad, don't feel ashamed if bad thoughts come to your mind. There is no problem. It is good. It is good that bad thoughts come, but then you need to use what, what the Spirit says about temptation. Because some thoughts is temptation, temptation, right? It's something that then you need to use, you need to transcend it in a, in a sense. That's why I put be aligned with the divine laws. And we don't need to we don't need even like to break our head to understand that because we have so many teaching about the golden rule, what to do right, what's the right thing to do, right? We are in a level that we know how to make this. We have progressed so much that we can make that decision. Even if you don't, if you say, ah, I don't want to think about this, but inside of our conscience, question 625, Leo, 21, I don't know, help me over there. So what is the law of God written? And the answer in the conscience, I think it's 621, 625, something like that. Yeah. So we have inside of us this divine, um, divine, the divine law, divine seed that we need to exercise. To, to close for your question, so first don't feel ashamed of that. Don't feel bad. And Joanna Judge in the book, in this book, here, Happy Life. There's one man that has said that every time a bad thought comes, replace with a good one. You thought about rob a bank, and then the good one is like, oh my goodness, let me see what my neighbor has, you know, if he needs some help. Something like that, silly, you know, but then immediately replace the thought by others. So I think the goal is like, if bad thoughts come, Let's analyze and let's make a decision to not potentiate that, right? So that would be my suggestion. Go, I mean, I, I understand your question. It's not easy to accomplish. And if we repeat this by repetition, by doing this, eventually we're gonna reach a point that, you know, when bad thoughts come, immediately is automatic convert in good ones, you know, by our own way to live our life. Leo. <clears throat> Uh, uh, no, I just want to add something to what you have just said. Uh, that having a bad thought and not putting it in practice, yes. it's already a proof of a proof of the progress that we have achieved already. Yes. Because uh, that's the path to the next phase. So to not having bad thoughts, what will happen naturally? So now we we're still having bad thoughts, but we can already avoid not to put that in practice which yeah. is it's very good already very good yeah mm. yeah so one of thing when you talk i know that the time is when we talk about for example forgiveness right is that we cannot forgive if we don't self forgive first right so self love self forgiveness and recognize that we have the bad thoughts that you know that's part of evolution how are we going to make choice in life? How are we going to progress? By using our reason. Use our reason is to make decision between what we work, what's positive, what's negative. For this, we need to be put in that situation. So we need to have those type of thought that is not so elevated because we are the one that is saying that's bad, not God, because that God didn't create evil, right? We make, we create bad things to solve that. We human, we create that, right? So we create bad things, then we create, we create situation to, 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 um, just to how do you say to remove that bad things? Because God didn't create evil. We human being created it. So we create problem to solve that problem. All the laws that we have, the human civil laws is come out come come comes after we have a have a problem right so if you see all the traffic lights they put traffic lights because there is an accident if there is no accident there is no traffic light but if there is a demand then there is a 
uh, we're going to look that situation and we judge this is not good. This is not going to help progress. This is not going to help society. This is not going to help the human, the humanity. So then we create laws, the material plan, right? Leo. Daniel, um, there's no more questions. So I'd like to ask a question. <laughs> the last one, how right? to deal how how do we since we don't live alone right we're you know we live in community we live in society um how do we deal with the um unalignment or if we can say that way um uh, of other people other people's priority and when people don't align their priorities with ours you see this type of priority you can write a book on that right so yeah that is this right just talk about un one direct Unidirectional priorities, just our priority. But if we live in society, if you live in family, other people has priority. You know, your spouse has a priority that does not align with your priority. Well, conversation. We need to come to the same page, right? Um, do, do you remember that drawing that is the prayer guy? That if you Google in the internet, there is a guy praying, like the draw. Do you know the the, the story behind that that drawing? So that was two friends that, and, and I remember that because I use that drawing. If you Google, it's called the prayer, the prayer of hand, hand prayer, something. It's, it's hands, hands that, pray hands. Yeah, pray. Do you remember that, Johnny? So that's a story about two friends. Um, and they are very close. I don't know if they're brother or friends. And one of them wanted to go to school to, um, so they didn't have money. So one of them said, I'm going to work and you're going to go to school. I pay for your school. And he wanted to be a drawing painter, right? So, and the other one was working every day. But one day he arrives home and he saw his friend kneel down and praying, um, you know, for the success of the friend that was going to school. So the idea is like this, that he's going to go to school first, get the degree, and then He's going to work and the other friend is going to go to school. So they make that deal, right? So and then when he comes home, he sees his friend praying and he got his paper and drawing. And this draw, if you Google, I mean, you're going to find the prayer, prayer hand, hands pray, prayer hands, something, pray hands. So that's the story behind that. I don't know if this is true, but I read this. Yeah, they were brothers, right? And so why I'm saying this, Leo, because... You know, when we live in family, when we live in community, we we got to have this compromise agreement. You know, it's like it, it, each case is what we cannot do. And I think it's not beneficial is the imposition of a priority on others. So always there is we need to have an agreement. OK, this is a priority of our life, especially if we live together. So, and then after that, maybe we're gonna follow your priority, or vice versa. But I think the, the problem is that if we impose our priority in other people's life, and this can go in every place, like workplace, family, you know, even here at the Spirit Center, you know, if one day I come here and say, hey guys, you know, we start next year, we're gonna have our meeting outside. Because this is going to be the priority of the Spirit Center, because we're going to be worshiping the sun. Something like that. Crazy, right? So what are you going to say? What are you talking about? <laughs> right? So we need to see if the priority also makes sense. You know, I mean, each case um, has, you know, that different peculiarity. <laughs> yeah. So, Leo, I think we are, we are good for today, right? So let us more comments or anything. okay thank you thank you everyone um great comments i hope the message was um make you reflect upon your priority there is no intention to um i mean everything is is, is okay as long as it doesn't bring any any uh, consequence for the society right and we always need to reflect upon what can we do you know and don't feel depressed if you think like, okay, you know, I should have take those that time of my life. That's not the object of this talk. The object of this talk is just to help us to learn how to prioritize from now on. Whatever has passed, it's part of the past. There is no way we can bring. But I feel, you know, blessed 
for the opportunity to be here. And as Luis said, in this great country, right, that is a place that we we have this um, opportunity to express ourselves without any, and to create our priority without any um, problem with, you know, the law, right? Thank you, everyone. Uh, may God bless you. For those that are watching us online, we're going to move to our uh, passes now. We're going to do a final prayer, and then um, do a press. Good night, everyone.